Hi everyone, in this video we're going to talk about how to make a tour caliber backswing. I'm going to give you a few drills to help make sure that you do it each and every time you make a backswing. But before we get to that, I really enjoy doing these videos, bringing you this free content, and I want to continue to do so, but I need your help. And the help that I need is when this video is over, like my video, subscribe to my YouTube channel, which will just alert you when I have new videos available, and comment. Okay, so let's start our deep dive into making a tour caliber backswing. Now there's four motions that we're blending together when we make a backswing. The first one is, is we're going to be turning. The second one is I'm going to be tilting as I turn. The next one is I'm going to be extending. And then the last one is I'm going to be hinging. So I'm going to give you some drills that are going to address all of these different motions and then we're going to blend them all together and when we do that we're going to have a tour caliber backswing. So let's start with turning. And the drill that I have here is very simple. You can use a golf club. I like to use alignment sticks. But well, what's turning or what we're talking about turning is our torso, which would be our upper center. And think of your sternum, shoulders, that's all my torso, as well as my lower center, which would be my legs, my pelvis. All of it is turning together. So something we can do to start understanding this turn is just put a club across our shoulders. And, and I'm just turning to point the club, or excuse me, the end of the alignment stick at the golf ball. And from down the line, it would look more like this. So that kind of teaches me, okay, that's how I turn the upper part of my body, my shoulders, my chest, my torso, whatever you want to call it. But then I mentioned we, we also got to do the lower part. And a great way to get a feel for this or kind of watch or, or match it up is if you take two alignment sticks, take one of them and just scoot it through the belt loops on either side of your belt buckle like I just did here. And that's going to measure, or that's going to show us so we can see how much our lower body or our pelvis is turning. And then we're going to have this alignment stick across our shoulders or our chest or our torso again. And we're just going to do them both together. Now what you start to notice is that I can turn my, my torso and my shoulders a lot more than my hips turn. And that's quite natural. So we'll see about probably 90 percent or 90 degrees, excuse me, of shoulder turn and, and probably about 45 degrees of hip turn. Obviously that's going to change based on a player's flexibility. Might see a little more, might see a little less, but, but that's about the relationship we're going to see. So that takes care of the turning component and, and teaches me, you know, how do I, how do I create this turn? How do I create a good turn in the backswing? Uh, to really amp up or start my golf, my, my backswing or my golf swing. So the next thing that we're going to look at or we're going to cover is going to be the tilting aspect of it. And I've already shot a video about this, how to use the lead shoulder. So I'm not going to get it too in depth with this, but it's going to be very similar to what we're just doing and, and putting the club or the alignment stick across your chest and, and making sure that the butt end or of the club or the end of the alignment stick is pointing down towards the golf ball. So that'll take care of the tilting aspect of it. So again, we're turning, we're tilting. The next one we've got to look at is we've got to look at extension. We're extending. I'm not keeping my arms in here close to me. Okay, I'm not overextending where I'm, I'm falling over or, or reaching away. It's just how do I create um, some good extension? 
And to do that, you can see a couple things are going on here. My left arm, remember I'm left-handed, but my left arm is on top of my right arm, and my left elbow is coming off my side. Now, I'm not, not way off my side, but it's not staying tucked in either. I don't look like this when, when I'm taking the club away, and I shot a video about the trail arm that, that dives deeper into that if, if that's something you want to know more about. But I'm working on extending by reaching that club head back. And a great drill that I use for this to teach people that, one's a visualization drill is that if you've ever played baseball or softball and there's a catcher behind you and I'm just taking that club and I'm just putting it into the catcher's mitt. You know, from down the line, same thing. Catcher's behind me, I'm just putting it in the catcher's mitt. Another great way to do this, to make sure that we're getting extension that we're getting some depth is to put a golf ball behind the golf club. So you can see here's the ball I'm going to hit. I'm going to put a golf ball just behind that and if I were to let's say lift the club as opposed to reaching back extending I would never really even move that golf ball that's sitting behind the club. But if I make a good backswing what I'm going to see is I'm going to see that ball roll right straight back, right towards the camera. You saw it come right towards you. So that's a great drill. I'll do it once from face on so you can see as well. To help you learn or understand or start to get this extension in your backswing. And remember at the end I'm going to teach you how to blend all these things together. But we're just kind of uh, compartmentalizing them right now and, and then we'll bring it all together at the end. So I'm set up, I'm going to hit this golf ball. I've got a ball right behind my club. It's a few inches behind my club. And I don't want to pick the club up. You see if I do that, the ball doesn't move. Nothing happens or it barely moves. I'm just going to reach back towards that catcher's mitt. And as I do that, the ball rolls away in a straight line. And that proves to me, shows me that I'm getting sufficient extension in the backswing. So the next thing we have to, so we've covered turning. You know, if you could get two alignment sticks to show your, your upper and lower center, that would be great. And just learn what that turning feels like. How does it happen? The tilting, which again, just putting something across your chest, make sure that it's oriented towards the ground. You know, when I'm, when I'm turning, I don't, I don't want it to be level. Okay, that's going to cause some bad things in the golf swing. And then the extension. How can I get some extension? And real easy, club head in the catcher's mitt, put the ball behind the club, make a nice extended takeaway, ball's going to roll straight back. It's not rolling to the le inside or left. It's not rolling outside or right. It's rolling straight back, which shows me I'm getting great and sufficient extension. And then the last one that I mentioned, so tilting, turning, extending, hinging. And this is an important one and this is one, I've shot other videos about it, but this is one that I see go wrong with a lot of students day in and day out on my lesson tee. So I'm making that turn, I'm tilting, I'm extending, but as I'm doing that when my right arm or my lead arm is parallel to the ground the club is pointing to the sky or it creates a 90 degree angle or I like to call it an L and this is the second lever in the golf swing so if we start eliminating this we're gonna have contact issues we're gonna have distance issues and there's a common fault that I see when people eliminate this hinge and what it is they never hinge the club so they get extension but they never hinge they never hinge and to get the ball to fly somewhere because they're eliminating this lever they've got to do something to create some power they start working really hard and they start running their hand path way past so I see the trail elbow fly and I see the hands when I video them on uh, video I see the hands get behind their head because they're just elongating their hand path to create some arc since there's no lever in there to create some speed to get the ball to go somewhere and then the other thing they do is they got to work really hard like there are people who have to swing really hard to get the ball to go somewhere 
so they're overworking. And when, they, when I teach them, or they can learn to leverage the club properly, so to create this lever in the backswing and let it go, it's much easier for them to create distance. They don't, they, they don't feel like they're working so hard. They don't play 18 holes and feel like they just went 10 rounds with Tyson. So I've got a drill for this too that I want to show you. And as usual, it's fairly simple, not overly complicated. But what I'd like you to do is tee the ball up and you know get it a half inch to, to three quarters of an inch in the air. Make it easy on yourself. But it's just an L to L drill. And what I mean by that is I'm going to take the club halfway back. I'm going to make sure my right arm is parallel to the ground. And when that happens, I'm going to get the club to the sky. So I'm going to create this 90 degree angle here. And a couple communicators I use with my students, and, and they might work for you, is I'm going to point the club head to the sky or I'm going to point my thumbs to the sky. And if you're somebody who really struggles with this, you're great at the extension piece, but you don't really add the hinge piece, it's going to feel a lot more wristy and a lot wristier sooner in your golf swing. So another communicator I'll use with people who, who fall on, on that end of the spectrum is I'll have them feel like they have the club hinged by the time they get to their trail leg. So my left leg, it would be the right leg for a right-handed player. So let's give this a go. I'm going to work on getting my thumbs, that club head pointed to the sky. And I'm going to take the ball right off the tee. I'm going to be in my L position on the backswing, finish at my L position on the forward swing. So we go L to L and really solid and felt good. So that would be from a face on angle. I also want to do one from down the line so you could see it there. So from down the line, again, I have it maybe a quarter to a half inch up on the tee just to make it a little easier. And I'm just going to get the feel of hinging my wrist quicker, the thumbs or the club head to the sky, creating this L position and then finishing in the same L position. So we go L to L. Okay, so there's one other common swing fault that I see as it pertains to the backswing, and we're going to go over that. But now you have a better understanding of tilting, turning, extending, hinging, and we're going to blend them all together in just a moment. But before we do that, I want to show you this other common swing fault that I see. And what it is, is students take the club back a little too steep, and some take it back a little too shallow. So let's talk about that. Steep would be, as I take the club back, I'm pointing the butt end of the club to the ground. So that is a very steep angle. And shallow would be, I'm pointing the butt end of the club way too far uh, out that way. So what are we looking for? What would be the correct angle or takeaway? And what we're looking for is we would like to see the butt end of the club pointing to an extension of the target line. So if I just put this down, this alignment stick on the target line, both front and back, I want to keep the butt end of the club pointing to the extension of that target line. And the way I help students with this at my golf school is I very simply have them take a tee, put it in the butt end of their club, so I'll just stick it in there. And as they're practicing, they're turning, they're tilting, they're extending, the hinging, as they're doing that, I'll just make sure that they're pointing the T to the target line. And you can do this with your L to L drill, no problem, uh, to learn it. So one, that's one last drill that'll help you if you feel like sometimes you get too steep in the backswing or sometimes you get too shallow. And those will lead to a multitude of, of different swing faults from there. Now, as I said, we need to blend all this together. We've done it individually. You know, we talked about turning, we talked about tilting, talked about extending, and obviously the hinging as well. 
and now we know that that club should be at about a 45 degree angle. I want the T pointing at an extension of the target line. And the nice thing is when we do that, you know, I can hit balls with that T in there and it, and it just helps remind me. And some of you might say, okay, well, you taught us how to turn, you taught, I understand tilting, we got the extension, the hinge, but that only gets me this far in the backswing. How, how do I get to, you know, how do I finish my backswing? How do I get to the top? And once I'm in that L position and that club is hinged and I've got that second lever and it's at a good angle, then all I need to do is just finish getting my back to the target or just finish my shoulder turn. So it's just finishing that first one, finishing that turn. And from down the line, it's going to look here like this, where I've got the hinge, the butt end of the club is pointing to the target line. And I'm in a, a really good position here, and I just finish my turn, and that completes my backswing for me. And, and everybody has different ranges of backswings as far as some people are long, some people are, are, are shorter. But um, just to get as much range of motion as you can, physically can. Okay, so let's see if we can blend it together. So I'm just going to kind of rehearse again the turning and the tilting. I can kind of do those things together. I'm going to feel good extension, putting it into the catcher's mitt. Now I'm going to blend in that hinge with the butt end of the club pointing towards the target line. And I'm going to put my glove on here, which I haven't done yet. Hot Florida afternoon. We don't want to lose this golf club. All right. So let's see if we can blend that all together. Well, that felt pretty good. So I think this is something I need to continue working on. It's about one of the best shots I've hit this year. So now you understand how to make a tour caliber backswing. You have a few drills that are going to help you to consistently make this tour caliber backswing. And then we talked about blending it together and some things that you can do to blend it together. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. I have two more here right now that I promise will continue to help you improve your game. And remember, please like, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and comment.